Hi, welcome to the Jose Saria Foundation Pop-Up Museum to celebrate Jose Saria's 100th birthday. I'm Gene Brake, founder and chair of the Jose Saria Foundation. Let me take you on a tour. Jose was the first out candidate for public office when he ran in 1961 and started many organizations and has been named, known as the mother of the GLBT community, if you will because he was the first person to actually use that concept, the gay community. So he was really beneficial to our community in many ways. Starting here, we have um, items of an exhibit from his time, his, from his birth. Here's his christening gown, and he joked that his mother bought his first dress. Um, maybe she did. Um, and here is uh, items from his World War II service. He served in the European theater, um, and under a major Metaxas who marched, they, they landed in Marseille and marched to Berlin and he was in Berlin um, for the fall of Berlin and stayed as part of the occupation forces. Um, this story here on top is fascinating that we didn't hear about until after Jose had passed and that was in one of the two Nazi camps that they had liberated there were three Romanian prisoners that were there, three women, Romanian prisoners who were there who his major assigned to Jose and said, Jose, take care of these girls and make sure they're gonna be safe. Well, part of what happened was Vala, one of the three young ladies, fell in love with Jose's best friend, Tommy. And so Jose, being the ever industrious drag queen that he is, made a wedding dress out of a parachute, catered her wedding, and here are photographs that were sent to us from the grandchildren of her who had been who had kept in touch with Jose since World War II. Um, fascinating story that we didn't know until he passed. They saw his obituary and reached out to us. And so they sent us photographs and letters from Jose during the time he lived here in Cathedral City. Um, here is his um, government issue uh, rosary, his World War II rosary that he wore while he was in 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 Europe, including in the time in Berlin. So that was a fascinating glimpse to him. He was a, a man of faith and focused on that, but he had a different view of it than most of us. One of the things that he did is in 1965, he named himself uh, Empress One, Jose Empress One, the Widow Norton. Borrowing from the legend in San Francisco of Joshua Norton, who in 1859 had proclaimed himself Emperor of the United States. Jose decided to insert our community into an established tradition and, and legend within San Francisco and thus took on the moniker the Widow Norton. He was the long dead emperor's widow. And um, here in this photograph, thus the title Empress, and see in this photograph here that we have on display, you can see Jose standing next to his headstone. What you can't really see was directly behind that is Emperor Norton's headstone. Uh, many of us raised funds to purchase the plot next to his gravesite, uh, Emperor Norton's gravesite, so that Jose could be with her dead husband for all eternity. Hopefully they finally met. Because his persona was the widow Norton, one of the things he did was he always, when he was appeared representing the widow Norton title um, or in that, in that persona, is he wore Victorian widow's weeds. And so this is one of the widow's weeds, one that you see here pictured in, here in this photograph. Um, but this is part of his persona and that will come into play later in his elaborate uh, Victorian funeral um, when he passed in 2013. So from that humble beginning of being the Empress, Empress One, he founded what became the International Imperial Court System. It began as the Imperial Council of San Francisco and now are in 70 cities throughout the US, Canada, and Mexico. Think of it sort of as um, the LGBT Shriners. They dress up in funny costumes, they raise money, they give it away every year. We don't drive clown cars, they wear tiaras and dresses. Same thing, just a slightly different ensemble. In the back over here, we have lots of mementos from his time um, as the Empress. One of the things he did was he did operas on the stage of a bar called the Black Cat Cafe at 710 North Montgomery Street in San Francisco. The operas, however, were, he changed all the words to the operas 
to represent and to deal with a political issue of the time, which was police entrapment and a great deal of targeting of gay men specifically um, by the police. So he would do operas. And so one of the operas, this is part of his costume for one of the operas. He did Carmen, and this is his um, um, veil and his um, um, comb, uh, tortoiseshell comb that he wore from that. Here, these are items from his period of time when he was um, empress. Um, his tiara here that you see, you'll see another photograph in a little bit where he's wearing this tiara. Um, the original was lost, but the original designer remade it for us for this display for his 100th birthday. And here you see different periods of photos. Um, the imperial court system began in San Francisco, but really began, it became an international court system with the um, joining of the Imperial Court of San Francisco with uh, groups in Los Angeles, um, Seattle, Vancouver, British Columbia, and Portland, Oregon, which really became the international court system. And really the nucleus of that now many years old organization began in the Northwest and on the West Coast. And here's a photograph of them joining together at an event in Portland in 1971. In 1961, he ran for political office, the first out candidate for public office. And he did so not because he necessarily thought he was going to win, but he wanted to prove that in our community, we're all equal. And in his opinion, by do, to put him, get his name on a ballot and you could vote for him, proved that our community and all of us were equal. And so here is his campaign poster from 1961. And in this campaign poster, his slogan was equality under the law. And so simply elect Jose Julio Saria and with equality beneath it. In this case here, you see several artifacts from his time as um, uh, in the Imperial Court. Um, this photograph in the back is one of my favorites because it is him on stage holding in one hand a script and a list of things he wants to talk about on stage at the Black Cat Cafe in San Francisco. These are jewelry items that he wore um, and were gifts to him, as well as some of his backup music because he always sang live. On this shelf, we see representations of Jose in the imperial courts. The photograph in the very back is Jose I with Emperor I, Marcus Hernandez, uh, Emperor Marcus in San Francisco. And then here to the right is, is a fascinating glimpse of a picture of Jose leading the pilgrimage to see Emperor Joshua Norton's grave. Began in 1972, Jose taking a group of people to put flowers on his dead husband's grave in Colma, California. This is one of those pilgrimages, and it still goes on today, early in the morning, on a Sunday morning, about the second or third weekend in February. We board buses, head out to Colma, California, joined by the Freedom Marching Band, march up the hill, sometimes with a 21-gun salute, and always with a tongue-in-cheek performance graveside with the emperor, and now with where Jose is buried. Um, that's a lovely photo from 1980. The Black Cat Cafe, we talked about how he was um, an opera singer there and did parody operas on Sunday evenings. He began at the Black Cat Cafe in the late 1940s, about 1948 or 49, and he was a, sing he was a waiter, and he would sing when he would serve tables. Um, to the accompaniment of Hazel, the piano player. Well, on the bottom shelf here, we see his server's apron that he wore at the Black Cat Cafe um, from 1948 to 1963. Here in this case, we have Jose, one of Jose's gowns, um, a taffeta gown made by one of his courtiers in San Francisco. And if wore it in his imperial court um, regalia when he would have these formal events, and if you look right here, there's a photograph of him wearing that gown, um, always accompanied with his gold and blue sash, um, his his, to signify his office as empress. The imperial court system is still, like I said, in operation today. It's the oldest um, and largest um, LGBT organization still in operation today and raising funds throughout the country. Um, here, this photograph here on the back of the room, draped in black, was initially um, was on stage at the event in New York City called Night of a Thousand Gowns and later hung on the wall of the Roxy Diner in Portland, Oregon for many years. Um, lovely Suzanne, um, on the, when we were driving down with the items to be on display here from Washington where the archives lives the rest of the year, 
Um, I stopped in Portland and she made sure that I picked that up to bring down here to be on display because it was meaningful to her and it's certainly meaningful to our community because if nothing else, the look on Jose's face on there is one we've gotten many times just before she said something like, really Mary, you want me to do what? We've seen that look many times. Here in the back of the room, we also have a poster in 2021 was the 60th anniversary of Jose's run for public office in 1961. And so we had this poster created by an artist in Denver, Colorado, and it is um, his original campaign poster with him when he was on a table at the Black Ca Cafe encouraging our community to stand up for their rights. One of the things that he would do when he would stand on those tables is he would uh, profess loudly, united we stand, divided they catch us one by one. And at the end of every single show, he would have the entire audience stand up and sing, God save us, Nellie Queens. Now, if he urged the piano player to start the music earlier in the evening, that was a signal to the patrons that the vice squad had just walked in the bar and to be on their best behavior. So he would, and then he would sing the song and then he would call out those vice officers for trying to entrap and harass the patrons of the Black Cat. One of the celebratory items that we did for this celebration for 100, 100th birthday here in Palm Springs, he was bestowed the Palm, uh, one of the Palm Springs Walk of Stars. Um, this one is, is a replica of it and it is on display right on the corner, right next to his favorite actress, Marilyn Monroe. So it's by the Forever Marilyn statue here in Palm Springs, California. This piece of artwork was done by R. Mike Nichols. Um, and it is a great depiction of many of the phases of Jose's life. So in this one, this is Jose in his later years, um, relaxing on his sofa in his, or a chair in his, his home. Um, here is an image of him when he was in the military. Jose on stage in New York City's Night of a Thousand Counts. At the top, you see him dressed um, in the Sugar Plum Fairy costume. He would always portray the Sugar Plum Fairy in the annual event in San Francisco called the Dance Along Nutcracker. Similar to a sing-along, he would get everyone up to dance. And here is an image of what the Black Cat Cafe at 710 North Montgomery looked like um, in San Francisco. We, colorful image and it really speaks to the many facets of Jose, Jose's life. The large image here is of Jose in 1948 in San Francisco after he had returned from World War II and um, when he served in World War II one of the things he does he was the driver and orderly for Major Metaxas. And he didn't really, I always loved this photo because he was very dashing looking but yesterday we had a, um, a military historian came in and looked at it and told me things about this image I'd never noticed. For example, he said the braid he's wearing on his left shoulder. He could only wear that braid if he worked directly for a commanding officer. And so it made perfect sense. The other thing he says, that emblem that's directly above his pocket, he said that is um, a combat infra infantryman's badge. And he said it's one of the most revered things um, in the Army, and so I was glad to know a little history about some of what he's wearing in that photograph. Jose lived a very long life. He lived to 90, but that wasn't long enough for him. Jose really always said he had more that he wanted to accomplish, um, and he accomplished a lot, but he always wanted something else. So here we have some vignettes of um, a vignette of things to do with his, his funeral, which was a huge funeral. Um, and it was in San Francisco in uh, Grace Cathedral up on Knob Hill. Now he had left, you know, his persona was the Widow Norton, well, he, and dressed in Victorian widow's garb. He had left specific instructions that in his funeral, he wanted those coming to the funeral to be dressed in Victorian wedding garb. So here we have um, um, an example of the black armbands that the men were expected to wear, and women were expected to wear, um, a veils, um, black, black gloves, a veil. And there was a joke made that that weekend in San Francisco, all the tulle and all of San Francisco was worn on the top of a drag queen at Grace Cathedral. It was, it was really a spectacular funeral. Um, it, and he, it was so fitting for him. There's a small bumper sticker back here that really most people overlook and don't think much about it. But that bumper sticker was something that Jose found um, after he had been diagnosed with cancer. 
And he said, the opera ain't over till the fat lady sings. And he would say, this fat lady hasn't started singing yet, so don't give up on me. I'm still kicking. We move down slightly here. We see some items. So one of the things that Jose would do is Jose would um, bestow an area of the country to say, you can start an imperial court in your community. Well, this is a certificate that Jose had given to Velveeta Mozzarella the Great, past empress of San Francisco, who has lived in, in the area for many years. And this is ceding the, the Coachella Valley to, um, to Velveeta, to, uh, we call her Maz, to uh, start the court here. And she said, you know, we don't really want to start a court here. L let's make this neutral territory. So in the imperial court system, the Coachella Valley and the Palm Springs is considered neutral territory. There's no imperial court may set up housekeeping here. We all retire here. Seems fitting, right? Um, this is some religious um, medals that Jose had that um, she gave to um, Empress Reba, who also lives here. Most recently moved here from Idaho, is where Reba's from, and she lent those to us. This shelf of cases um, touches on a fascinating period of Jose's life. Jose um, was, and everything else, he was a restaurateur. This is a picture of Pierre Parker. Pierre Parker was one of Jose's patrons at the Black Cat Cafe. He also, in later years, uh, was a restaurateur, and he owned the French restaurant concession in, for World's Fairs. So he had a business partner in the Seattle World's Fair that didn't work out very well, so he came back to Jose, his old friend Jose and said, Jose, you have to do the rest of these with me, um, or else I'm going to give up the contract. So Jose, off he went. So he worked with him, the World's Fairs in New York, in Montreal, in Spokane, San Antonio, and Knoxville. And so here we have mementos from those different times and those different world's fairs. I love this image of Jose as a very young waiter um, in, at Expo 67 in Montreal. And then his ID badge from the New York World's Fair. The next shelf above is very interesting in that here is a record album, um, No Camping. And Jose tells a story that it came about that he was contacted by Velvet Records, who was primarily a gospel record album producer. And they said, we don't really know why, but we were told to contact you and we should do this record album. So here and this is um, that, uh, uh, the result of that. Um, the record album, it was only one. They didn't do a second one, um, but it is, it's fascinating to hear that. This one was, strangely enough, found in a garage sale in San Diego, California. Who knows? Um, and then here is the book uh, about him, The Empress is a Man, by Michael Gorman. It tells his life history. Um, it's a fascinating read. It's out of print, but you can certainly still find them. So here we have images of Harvey Milk, Dr. Frank Kameny, uh, Jose Saria, Barbara Giddings, and Bayard Rustin. Um, truly all trailblazers in our GLBT community that we're very proud of. And the top shelf here was something that was just recently acquired. In 2021, the um, LGBT Fallen Heroes Fund did a ceremony at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., where they honored Jose Saria um, as a fallen hero, and they sent that to us. Jose would have elaborate dinner parties at his house. So before you could go to bars and could go out to the public necessarily, you could dress up and you could go to individuals' homes for formal dinner parties. And here we see this is Jose's china, uh, as well as his placemats that were printed with his logo, um, the crest of the Widow Norton, the Nightingale of Montgomery Street, which was his um, nickname from singing at the Black Cat Cafe on Montgomery Street. And here in this case, it talks about um, some of the awards that were named to honor Jose after he had passed. In this particular case, we have the Jose Honors Award, which began in 1997 with San Diego. And the award is given every year or two, um, and it rotates throughout the United States and Canada to imperial court members who have exceeded you know, expectations or have done an outstanding job, actually. Um, in this particular case, we have the first program in 1997 and then many programs subsequent to that. Um, 
Um, the, the award, it's interesting here, it's a bust of Jose. And when Jose saw the award, Jose's comment was, it looked like Ernest Borgnine in drag. So he would joke about, oh, did you get an Ernie? Um, um, and so here is a picture of the, the bust of Ernie. No one knows who Ernest Borgnine is. If you're young, look it up. Go to Google. Um, and then here's the medal that is given to a company that award when it's given to an Imperial Court. As we talked about earlier, one of the things that um, Joshua Norton, the self-proclaimed emperor of San Francisco would do was that he would, one of the things he would do is he would write, create his own money. And so he would take it to a restaurant in San Francisco between 1859 and 1888. And, and the restaurants would say, sure, come on in. And they would say, the emperor ate here. Well, here is um, in, what year was it, 1996, Jose did that as a fundraiser for uh, the Imperial Court of San Diego. And so we here have a framed buck of Jose's. It's actually 25,000 bucks. I'm hoping no one tries to cash that. That might not go over very well. And then just to, in the top case here, we have uh, a congressional um, uh, award, if you will, uh, for the 45th anniversary of the Imperial Court system that began in 1965. So things on this ship, uh, this shelf um, are, are, are mementos from the 50th anniversary of the International Imperial Court System that was in 2015 in Portland, Oregon. Um, pins wrote um, different items that were given as mementos. And although Jose had passed in 2013, his, his presence was definitely felt large. He had a, a, a giant banner that was some 25 feet tall at the front of the ballroom, and every speaker spoke about their admiration for Jose and all that he had done. Um, we had con congressmen, we had mayors, we had state representatives, Speaker of the House um, of California, um, legislators from Canada, um, as well as um, Cleve Jones, founder of the Names Project, um, Dustin Lance Black, um, there to reveal his uh, upcoming project that he was going to include Jose in. Jim Oversfell, um, the um, plaintiff in the marriage equality case, um, and uh, many others. It was quite a spectacular evening um, to honor Jose and honor all he had accomplished after 50 years. And then here at the very last thing here on the bottom is a certificate given in 1995 um, when Jose was reaching the end of his leadership and wanted to for, form a council of people to help advise him and to carry the imperial court system forward. Um, and this was in 1995 in February when he named his first heirs apparent who would be the ones to, uh, uh, which formed a court council to help guide uh, in his absence when he got older and he passed. This image here, this larger than life image of a larger than life personality of Jose Saria was from an event in um, New York City called Night of a Thousand Gowns, one of the largest um, events of the imperial court system. In this photo, she is wearing the tiara that we have um, in the display case over here, but as, as it were, she would always crown the new emperor and empress, which were the co-chairs of, co of fundraising for the new year, and always be there to support these events. Um, so absolutely one of my favorite. When Jose passed in 2013, there wasn't any sort, there wasn't a foundation that was going to maintain um, her personal legacy. Um, there were the International Court Council, there were several organizations that were doing work, but their work was many fold, they had many things. And so myself and some friends of Jose's decided we would start the Jose Saria Foundation. Um, I um, am the chair of the Jose Saria Foundation. We founded it in 2016. And our purpose initially was to do fundraising to help get the, first, the film that she authorized called Nellie Queen, The Life and Times of Jose Saria, finished and completed so that there would be documentation of all that she went through to accomplish um, what she did in our community. Um, and since then, the film is completed and now we take that film and we do um, show the film to universities and student groups so that they can learn about who she was or who he was. Um, he was only a she when he was wearing this. He didn't live as a woman. So I'm looking at his image over my shoulder thinking she, but he really lived as a he. Um, 
But um, so I found the foundation. And so for his 100th birthday, we wanted to do something special. We wanted to do this pop-up museum here in Palm Springs. Um, and thanks to the city of Palm Springs and Mary Lisa Middleton, um, we were able to make this happen as well as get the Walk of Stars for Jose here in Palm Springs, where she lived much of the last 10 years of her life. And if you want to learn more about Jose Saria or what the Jose Saria Foundation do, does, go to josesaria.org and everything you could possibly want to know is there. Uh, we would appreciate donations to the cause that helps us spread his inspiring story. Um, and we hope that you enjoyed this little mini walkthrough of the Jose Saria Museum pop-up here in Palm Springs, California.